me think it amazing. Hello and welcome back to the Grey Cricketer. Welcome back to TGC's World Cup Morning Glory. India Peza is now just one win away from completing their destiny. This entire thing that we've all been watching from across the globe for the past two months has existed for India, for India to win, for India, for India to exhibit its dominance over these games, the format, the sport, the world, and we are witnessing greatness right now, ladies and gentlemen. We are witnessing great players doing unbelievably great things. In the words of Harsha Bogle on commentary, hold my water, pal, baby. Coley breaks a record in front of Sachin, in front of Sarah's dad, in front of Shubman's father-in-law. Coley breaks the record in front of David Beckham for some reason. Coley breaks the record in front of Hardik Pandya wearing a fedora and drinking out of a coconut. <laughs> Beckham, of course, one of the one of the last Galacticos uh, in the early two thousands. Real Madrid president um, Florentino Perez began signing players that were, in his words, from another galaxy. Beckham, Figo, Roberto Carlos, Zinedine Zidane, but India now, Peza, they have their own Galacticos. Shami, Shami, <laughs> Sharma. Kohli, Ayer, Bumrah, Jadeja. Kohli, 100. He's 50 or 30, 100 in this game. Shreyas Ayer, 100, apparently. I didn't really catch that. Shami taking Shami taking 7 for 57. A sea of blue at the Wankity to witness for the second last time, the second last dance. One of the most dominant performances ever in World Cup history, perhaps even sports history. Play on whatever pitch you want. Use the double-sided coin. Bring all the celebrities. This is India's moment. This is India's time. And what kind of psychopath would want their team to play against this team from another galaxy? Hit the like button if you've enjoyed Virat Kohli, seeing Virat Kohli's 50, 30, 100. Click subscribe to the Grey Cricketer. There's two games left in this World Cup. So please do join us here on TGC. Hit that subscribe button. Pezar, this was was uh, in many ways the closest game for India in the tournament, winning by a mere 70 runs. Yeah. Uh, New Zealand needing about 15 and over for the last 20 overs, but it was kind of close. Uh, after nine games of like historically unrivaled dominance, like with the pageantry to match, mm. like was it possible for India to take it up a notch this semi final? Was it fuck? <laughs> you got a semi final. You've got crying Western media oh, leading into it. Yeah, play it in. Ravi Shastri, Mumbai, mm. 36 degrees, oh. wind toss, bat. Yeah. There's Jay, there's Sachin, <laughs> there's David Beckham. <laughs> Trent Bolt, yes. first ball of the game, yeah. bowls a beautiful in-swinger yep. to the right-hander. Textbook. At 140 Ks, Rohit Sharma strums it off his penis yep. for the easiest two you've ever seen. Lockie yep. Ferguson loses his knee in the turf, <laughs> and you know it's going to be a long afternoon for the skeletons. You know? <laughs> exactly. And so it proved. Yeah. So it proved. At least New Zealand mm. gave India a feeling. Yeah. At one point. At one point. Which was an irrational something. which was an irrational feeling because they ridiculous. still needed twelves. Yes, that's all right. But for a moment, India was worried. Oh my god, they might do this if they go at twelves. Yeah. That's how far <laughs> ahead India are. Yeah. Daryl Mitchell plays one of the all time great semi final innings. Yep. All the best to you, mate. Yep. All the best. All the best. Not even the best innings of the game. <laughs> <laughs> a footnote. One of the best footnotes in the game. The <laughs> The Great Cricketer is brought to you by Cricket.com. You can download the Cricket.com app from the App Store. You can also subscribe to their YouTube channel. And ours. And ours. But theirs is called Cricket.com forward slash TV. But we thank Cricket.com for supporting TJC during this World Cup, this momentous World Cup. First thing he goes, Coley reigns supreme. Yeah. Okay, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. um, leading into it, Rohit Sharma plays the role of chief tone setter. It, no, it ma it mattered. It mattered. Uh, mm -hmm. He he just came out and opened up the floodgates and just went ballistic. They yep. were they were fifty sixty after six overs. Yeah, forgive us for thinking it was game over. Yep, at that point, Darren Lehman actually tweeted game over at the toss. I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> wow, were that late? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Shubman Shubman yeah. breezes to seventy and then gets a call from Sarah. <laughs> Off you come. Coley breaks the record. Now he's on his knees to Sachin. Yes. Yes. This is like, how many times has the word script Mate. been used 
Uh, it's perfect. Shreya Sire plays the most forgettable 60 ball 100 in a semi. <laughs> it's Arthur Morris. <laughs> KL tops it off. My favourite part of Collie's 100? Yep. Sachin's tweet. Here we go. May I read it? Lay it down for me. May I read it? Lay it down for me. What's the tweet? See, Sachin, so obviously, uh, Collie Collie hits his 100. Yeah. Maybe there's about 13 singles leading up to it. Mm -hmm. Then it's a two. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he's on his knees bowing to Sachin. Yeah. Look, it's easy to be cynical. Arguably funnier, mm. plays to various audiences. Sure. I thought it was cool. He doesn't need to do that. Yeah. He doesn't need to like get down on his knees to somebody when he literally breaks the record. I think that's cool. Um, it, was, it was cool, I, to, cool I, to do it in front of the statue of Steve Smith. <laughs> <laughs> now that looks like a real Sachin shot, that one to me. But um, yep. Sachin's tweet yes. uh, to respond to Coley, who was so humble in the face of the uh, king of Mumbai. Et Aviators on. Yeah. Uh, Special moment. So Sachin tweets, uh, just to continue the theme of humility. (laughs) The first time I met you in the Indian dressing room, you were pranked by other teammates into touching my feet. (laughs) God, God tier. That's God tier. Give him the World Cup now. (laughs) I couldn't stop laughing that day. But soon you touched my heart with your passion and skill. I am so happy that that young boy has grown into a Virat player. Yeah. I couldn't be happier that an Indian broke my record. And to do it on the biggest stage in the World Cup semi final yeah. and at my home ground <laughs> is the icing on the cake. Oh, that's why he's the best. That's why he's the that's king. <laughs> he can score 50 ODI tons, yeah. but one tweet can just yeah. bring it down. You'll be on my ma- ground. Maintain the in status front of quo. Me. Oh, that is sensational. So I thought, I thought that was really cool. Uh, all the while, uh, during this first innings in particular, also second, but, like, the fans, again, a massive shout-out to them. Uh, they have ascend, ascended to, like, some higher plane mm-hmm. of fervour. Like, it's chanting, it's roaring, it's baying yep. for just – it feels like 50 overs straight. Mm-hmm. Um, has a country ever looked hungrier – to destroy all opposition before them. Everything is joined up. Uh, you can feel the fervour through the television in between. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. Like the yeah. Rick Stein on a uh, cooking show that you're watching. It uh, it's really is like a 12th man effort. And I mean that beyond, you know, um, Ravi Ashwin's massive sunglasses that he's running on his face. <laughs> it, do, it does feel like there is a 12th, 13th, 14th, 1.4 billionth man. Yes. You know, it does feel like... Um, you know, the, the greatest achievement was obviously, you know, overcoming China as the most populous country on the earth. And then, of course, then there was this record yes, as well last night with Virat Kohli. Uh, but, like, the, the the fever is is the right word for it. I mean, um, I think that some of Australia knows that there's a game on tonight, but, mm-hmm. uh, but, but this joint unified effort of the nation uh, – it, it's I, I'm struggling to put into words clearly, which is lucky because I don't really um, work in broadcasting or words itself. So that's 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 good. But it's well, it, it is, is it's remarkable. Tenth, it is the tenth time in a row we're lauding <laughs> Indian cricket. I, like have, I have jaw lock from sucking off so much. <laughs> the number of people who uh, tweeted us last night saying, "Can't wait for the suck off tomorrow, boys." <laughs> Wake up in the morning just, for a good old blowjob. I'm going to get a blowjob <laughs> in the morning from two blokes <laughs> off the internet. Meme that a um, couple of whites, <laughs> white lightning. Uh, I want to shout out Shreyas' 100. Um, stepped in when Gil uh, yeah. Cramp slash phone uh, got a phone call. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Immediately went to work, struck it near 150s. Yep. Uh, which enables the king uh, to advance to yet another yep. coronation. Yes. Uh, Shreyas I hits a low key long ball. Like first and third longest sixes this tournament. Again, I don't know. Is it low be, key now? That, that could be BCCI stuff. Low, <laughs> low key, low key in so far. Come on, low key yeah. in so far as uh, like it doesn't it doesn't look like a long ball physically speaking, like relative to others. It doesn't it doesn't yeah. immediately appear levers. Yep. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, it is. Like three weeks ago, Shreyas was a, you know, like you had to squint your eyes a little bit, uh, but like a potential ice squinting weak link yep. in the Indian batting lineup. Uh, now he's just joined the ranks of the gods. He too averages over 50 now, like the entire top five. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, like the question with India is like, how the fuck do you even get a look at Jadeja? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. How do you even get a look at him? Well, like Suryakumar Yadav 
Uh, he faces two balls and he gets out mm. for one. One of Southie's three wickets, as also Tim Southie tons up in the game with three for 100. That's right. That's a good knock too. But, um, but yeah, like how, how do you even get that far? So Shreya Sire, uh, so he, when he went past 50, that was four 50s in a row. Mm. It was the last game they played against um, the Netherlands. Yeah, he got 128 against the Netherlands. Yeah, 70, so consecutive tons. 77 against South Africa and then 82 against Sri Lanka in the game before that. So, um, so 82, 77, 128, red, 105. Like, but it's not just him. Like he, he's almost playing like he's almost playing a role player at mm. number four. Like their, their dominance is they lose four wickets in this innings. To your point, how the fuck do you even get them into trouble when they've got every single one of their players is nearly in career best form? Mm. Shuman Gill I, is probably slightly under though. He scores eighty off sixty six in this mm. game. Rohit Sharma, his career is so storied that it's hard to say if this is his best moment. But like, but Coley is probably in his. Maybe in his pomp as he was in 20... When did he come out in Australia and do all those hundreds? 2015? Yeah, whenever, whenever that was. It's almost in that kind of form. But, like, it's so... What the fuck are we watching, man? 397 for four in a semi-final, Complete dominance. And, like, you're just looking at... Like, the innings is 50 overs of highlights. Why do I feel like, though this tournament is likely about Coley and his coronation and ascension to the ranks of true gods... Yeah. That, like... In a perverse way, he's being carried by the like absolute psycho level batting of everybody around right, him. Like right, Cole right. is being enabled to go at a runner ball. That's his role. That's Pressure, how it works. Pressureless. Like, other guys are coming in, scoring bulk runs at like 140, 150. You know, yeah. like they don't even get the opportunity to go to run a ball. It's like you've got to earn that title to actually go slower mm. to ensure your hundreds. Yeah, like the, you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. This yeah, is this yeah, is yeah. something we've never seen no. before. I want to get into all of the layers of that later, but like, how can you do anything other? Like, if you're not sucking it off, yeah, yeah then yeah. you're like red pilling on the whole thing. It's, right, it's, right, right. it's total suck off worth. Yes, Ines. Yes. Um, all right, hit it then. It's time for cricket.com stat dog. <laughs> That's not actually the sound of a dog. That's a suck off sound. Yeah, that's that's yeah. That's when, when, you're, when, you're, when you're really going at yeah, it, everyone thought that was a dog sound. Ah. Go goat, man. Get a goat, man. Get a goat, man. Cricket.com stat dog. a good little boy. Fifty or thirty I hundred for Coley. The most by a batter in ODI, surpassing Sachin's tally of 49. Pretty Clean good. statistic. Pretty good. Clean statistic. 850 plus scores for Coley this World Cup. The most by a batter in any World Cup. Shaq Eib in 2019. Sachin 2003. This is how you say it. Had seven. Yeah. 711 runs this World Cup for Coley. The most by any batter in an addition. Uh, of the World Cup, wow. going past Sachin's tally of 673 in 2003. I think he might have even passed it near or on his 100 that he brought up. Like, we're just writing scripts. Was we're it? writing teen fanfic. I only briefly caught this tweet from Harsha, but I think it was to the effect that Sachin's last innings was November 15 at the one kid he was Oh, it? okay. In that test match. Was that against the West Indies? I think it was. Yeah. And so then this record is in front of the great man. On um, on his ground, yeah. like the, the eight years later, there's the, the symmetry, there's the symmetry of yeah. November fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell, man! There's a lot of symmetry knocking around. Is this is World Cup. at any point one thing going to go wrong for them? Oh, Hardik Pani is injured, to be fair, but he's he's having a fedora. They got better. Drink, drink cut. That, the, the team is significantly they, they, better. They brought because in the greatest World Cup bowler ever. <laughs> the BCC has fucking pinged his hamstring. That's enough, Hardik. You'll do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Call your Jets. 13,794 runs in ODIs for Coley. He's now the third highest run scorer in the format. That's unders for me. Went past Ricky Ponting's uh, 13,704 runs. Ah, uh, well. Well, it's been a good run for we, us. We, we had some good years. We had a good run. <laughs> we, we, we had, had a good run. <laughs> this was the third year in which Coley registered six or more centuries in ODI. 2017, 18, and 23. I think that's an important one given a lot of people were calling for his head Mm. metaphorically for yep. a couple of years, but yep. the line of credit was correct. Mm -hmm. uh, Virat Kohli holds all these records. Uh, so 973, that's the most runs in a T20 series, IPL 2016, right? 711 yep. runs, the most runs in a World Cup, yep. which is this year, 2023. 319, the most runs in a 20, T20 World Cup, yep. 2014. So in all World Cups, he holds the records for most runs. Uh, then that's through the IPL in there because that's the real World Cup. His strongest competition for runs this World Cup was actually Harris-Ralph's bowling. Um, 
<laughs> Let's enjoy it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. This is your ride. Enjoy this it. Is, We're on our knees. This is your World I hope Cup. You're enjoying it. This is well, this Don't is your go World too Cup. soon. There's more to come. <laughs> Hold on. Um, yep. Shreya Sire, uh, that's the third fastest 100 on a World Cup for India. Yeah. Yeah. Um, podium. It's his sec- yeah, sec- yeah po- podium. No, podium for consecutive World Cup 100. So, uh, Rohit has three in 2019. Dravid hit two. In uh, 1999, now Shreyas joins him. Most sixes okay. by an Indian in a World Cup innings. Shreyas I overnight eight. Yeah. Impressive. That's that's pretty good. Uh, and uh, India's total three ninety seven for four is the highest in an ODI knockout game. Um, I'm not surprised by that. New Zealand held the record when they amassed three ninety three against West Indies in the 2015 quarter final. Wow! So that's wow. the batting innings. Right. Uh, well, should we get into the should we get into the the, the actual player of the match performance yet? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but what the fuck are they going to do in the final? <laughs> I mean, okay, so I got second thing, Shammy once again, um, <laughs> with seven for fifty-seven against New Zealand. Shammy now has the best spell for an Indian. Uh, before that was Stuart Binney against Bangladesh in twenty fourteen. What the fuck? Who are we held watching? the record with six for four. Hello, my auntie, and I mean yeah. my auntie. Yeah, Bob. Uh, seven. For 57. It's the best. <laughs> I mean, it's – this is a joke. This if, is – this If is you're a teacher, like, at an Indian school and a uh, 10-year-old submitted this to you for creative writing, yeah. you tear it up and go, yeah. come on. Come on. Settle I mean, down. I mean, there's there's creative, then there's ridiculous. That's right. There needs to be some semblance of reality. Exactly. This is this is, this is absurd. You, yeah. What you've created is absurdist humour. It's Shami's fourth fifer. <laughs> In the World Cup, the most by a bowler, going past Sark's three. Three out of those four have been in this edi- edition, yeah. which is the most for a bowler in a single edition yeah. of the World Cup. Uh, not to mention that he essentially uh, stopped the rot of Williamson and Daryl Mitchell's partnership. Right. He came back on and, and opened the game up there. Uh, Mate, I've got to tell you, if, I, if I've woken up this morning, I'm a Kiwi fan. I've seen this performance. I'm going to. I'm saying that's as good as I could have asked for. Because 100%. At, because at one point in the first innings, well, first of all, when they won the toss, I was thinking, okay, this could be brutal. Like, that, that, that's, that's how, that's how um, like, on, on a knife's edge, like, anyone's chances against India is. Like, basically, at the toss, it's, like, it's over if India bat first, right? So, I'm waking up this morning, I've seen Kane and Daryl Mitchell's 130. So Kane hit 69 of 73. Daryl Mitchell, 134 of 119, is genuinely one of the best semi final innings I, that I've seen. Um, and I've seen sort of two of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> On uh, highlights. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's right. Someone animated it in like stick cricket. So it sort of made it sort of easily digestible for me to watch it. Anyway, Darren Mitchell was genuinely superb. He, was, he hit nine fours and seven sixes. He was really the only one that could have any sort of attacking stroke play against Muhammad Shami. Um, it finished... Seven for fifty-seven, um, and he was he was great against Jadeja again. Jadeja's only wicketless games in this World Cup have been against New Zealand twice. Uh, Jadeja number sixty-three. He was by no means poor, but just um, Mitchell's footwork was outstanding. Hit him down the ground. There was a couple of reverse sweeps against um, Cool Deep. His cover driving against Shami and uh, and his power against Boomer as well was outstanding. Siraj was end up being quite expensive. One for seventy-eight off nine overs, going at eight point six, but. Mate, Dar- like, if I wake up, in the, as I said, as a New Zealand fan this morning, I'm thinking, fucking hell, we gave that a great go. And if we played against anyone and performed th- in that way, anyone else except for India, we'd be in the World Cup final. Oh, it's a, it's, I think it's very reasonable to say that uh, New Zealand have played, like I've beaten the second best team of the World Cup so far. I know there's two games to go and things can change, etc. Uh, Daryl Mitchell has made, has played India twice in this World Cup. He's made 130 and 134. Yeah. Uh, how do you, I mean, uh, the, the World Cup... In terms of batting, you know, the World Cup will, in terms of singular individual performances with two games to go, will probably be remembered for Maxwell's innings. Mm-hmm. I know others have done stuff yeah. uh, and done some good stuff. But in terms of, like, the uh, degree of difficulty of the dive, yep. Uh, yep. 130 and 134 against this Indian yep. bowling attack yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Um, and in losing sides too. So mm. don't, don't forget that. Um Low key, a big boy, Daryl Mitchell averages fifty seven in Test cricket and fifty two in ODI. Strikes wow. at one hundred and forty in T Twenty cricket. Hello, uh, IPL deal. Well, he's yeah, already got, he's already uh, got like, one. I know he's already got one, but like, uh, 
New Zealand needed an 11 out of 10 performance in this game. They probably gave an 8 out of 10 performance. Uh, I reckon in this World Cup, New Zealand have actually now lost as many games as they've won. They've played 10 games. They've won five, lost five. That's mm. how those numbers work. Yeah. And I don't think they've played a single bad game. Yeah. In the games they lost, they lost against India. They lost against uh, India twice. They lost against Australia, nearly chasing 400, just fell short against South Africa. I can't remember the, what happened in that game, but I feel like they, it was close. <laughs> Does that help you? <laughs> uh, and who else did they lose to? Australia? Did you say that? Uh, did I say Sorry. yeah? No, Australia, yeah, Australia, India twice, South Africa, and Pakistan. Right. They oh scored yeah. four hundred, yeah. and then they got done in Duckworth Lewis. Mm. New Zealand, I don't think have played a bad game in this World Cup. Yeah. They were obviously electric in that first game against England. Completely blew them out of the water before we knew what was going to happen to England. They beat the teams that they should beat, um, and then they performed excellently in the games they lost. Unfortunately, it's just turned out that it's another semi final, and it's the end of the era for this great. Kiwi side, there's obviously some breakouts here with, uh, you know, Ratchet and Ravindra, Devin Conway, so young enough, I suppose, Darren Mitchell the same, but um, it's a it's a great World Cup for New Zealand, and uh, I almost feel sorry for them. Miraculously, somehow, they've they've got a 50% record in the World Cup. Anyway, uh, <laughs> third thing, dealing with uh, India's dominance. Yeah. So, I want to begin, do we begin by talking about this pitch gear, or like the objective fact of their, like, excellent cricket on the field separated from the uh, administration and pageantry mm. and moments of India and our own, um, you know, c- like contextual issues with it. Do you want to start with like yeah, – Yeah, well, I, I – Because thought- I think dealing with India's dominance yeah. is a very – um, is a palpable theme of this World Cup sure, that requires yeah, yeah. a lot of introspection from everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not just people who have been used to being uh, in charge of cricket. I think like I think a lot of people have said that it's it's they find it frustrating given the pitch thing where they've um, you know it's openly acknowledged now that yeah that um, that the base SCI have just moved that wicket to one that suited the team based on team management decisions. So and I think the frustration for a lot of Indian fans has been that I have observed so anyway is that like the team is so good that they don't need this, mm. you know, but, uh, you know, that's been to a bigger conversation of like nothing is being taken to chance. All the, the, the tipping of the scales in every capacity has lent towards India's favour, but like the team is so good. <laughs> has a team dominated the World Cup like this in mm. any sport? I'm not sure. Um, do they need these, these little one percenters, which, which gives the rest of the world, if they care at all, a stick to beat India with. It's like, ah, see, look what's happening. But, but they, perhaps they, India, they'd be winning these games without this. Perhaps you know? Indians feel that uh, they could be the, the the fairest and most scrupulous of any administration ever and they'd still be beaten with a stick. You know, that if perhaps. you were, uh, And there probably would be sections of people who do that. I mean, yeah. with, the, with the pitch stuff... Um, just to, uh, I guess, give it some um, fact or some shape before the discussion. Um, So according to a a report that came from the Daily Mail, UK, Lawrence Booth, very credible journo, editor of Wisden, uh, the Almanac, the semi-final was originally scheduled to be played on pitch seven at the One Katy, but was moved to pitch six. Pitch seven is unused, whereas pitch six has hosted two matches. It's a a used pitch. Mm. First thing to note, you said this off air, uh, fresh pitch, used pitch. It's like gold jacket, green jacket, who gives a shit? Right. Uh, If a pitch is good, a pitch is good. I think that's a misnomer, really. It's not Uh, the point. It's not the point. Not the point. Yeah. Um, And ICC, the the, the point is that um, the allegation is that uh, the um, home team, local cricket association and the BCCI went over and above the independent ICC pitch consultant to arrange the pitch, went behind him, over him. It was uh, decided away from yeah. the guy who makes the decision. Right. Um, and, I, and, and by the way, um, in response to those who may be saying this is crying Western media and stuff, also reported by local journos, none of those things are disputed. Um, an ICC spokesperson said... And this was one of the funniest. I used to, look used to do communications. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a very funny. This is a very funny statement from As the ICC. F- from the ICC, Here being the comms person writing this statement, Got what it. it's attempting to do, what it's actually doing. Okay, changes to planned pitch rotations are common towards the end of an event of this length, and has already happened a couple of times. It's a very loose language. Already happened a couple of yeah, times. This happened. is what you say at the pub a couple yeah. of times. Yeah. Um, this change was made on the recommendation of the venue curator in conjunction with our host. 
The ICC independent pitch consultant was apprised of the change. Mm. Great word, apprised. What yeah. the fuck does that what mean? What does that mean? Told. Told. <laughs> and has no reason to believe the pitch won't play well, which isn't the point, whether it will play well or not. It was when he was told, after it was decided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think the point uh, with all of this is that that statement confirms that the decision was made away from the um, ICC guy yeah. and it leads to discussions about whether the BCCI and Indian cricket generally brazenly um, forego notions of, uh, um, you know, fair, um, I guess, ad administration of tournament play, yeah. you know. Um, the Indian team wants a slower pitch, they get one in an international tournament. Yeah. Um, as you say, do they need one? No, but... Perhaps it's just a joined up strategy and let's leave no stone unturned to ensure that we get to optimise the chances of us winning. I think it's pretty reasonable for um, normal fans uh, of the Indian cricket team uh, and then just generally fans globally that see this thing as part of a pattern of behaviour from um, – from from the host nation, where it's like, I, like it's it's easy to get upset with that, and I think rightfully so. It's like this is fucking bullshit, and like to be honest, it is fucking bullshit. Mm. Like it just shouldn't happen. But like, of course, like anytime you complain about that in the manner, it's, there's a lot of water battery. What about when you guys did this? What about when this happened? What about um, in the uh, last World Cup when they the semi final the final was used on uh, was played on used wickets for the T Twenty World Cup in Australia? It's like yeah, that's not the point, is it? Like it's not um it's not like a government interference of just like we're going to do this behind everyone's backs. You're crying more. So, you know, um, yeah, there's just there's just a frustration where I think like this this team is playing such good cricket. I don't think I've seen a, as dominant a performance from one singular team in any form of cricket. They they win the they win time. the next game. It goes they go down as the greatest ODI team ever for, for me. Uh yeah. it's it's uh, Hard to the, argue, the, man. the most dominant. Yeah. Uh, just on that just on that um that whole thing around like the, the water battery, um, which I think in this case, what like the water battery is a fair introduction to the entire conversation. Mm -hmm. Cause I think it's a, very historically layered, all of this stuff. Like, I, like mm -hmm. a try and think philosophically about it. Like, do you, do you think India's conduct um, is objectively nefarious or do you think we're so accustomed to like a Western hegemon in mm -hmm. cricket that any deviation from that yep. just feels wrong uh, and is unfamiliar to us um were england and australia mm. as nefarious as india in our own ways during our own monopolies but it was normalized and we never took notice of it perhaps um is india's behavior just standard monopolistic behavior when you assume power <laughs> in the game yeah um and they haven't dominated since the Mughals. Uh, mm. And perhaps the country's thirsty to exercise some dominance in the same way that if we're in the fair income department, yeah. which we only occasionally are, that's right, is actually what happens in life, that, that when you, assume yeah. you get power, it exercises itself in its own way. Um, okay, they bend a couple of pitches to suit them because they're in control of cricket. Maybe mm. that's just... You know, maybe maybe we've got to wake up and smell the coffee. Yeah. And that's how it goes. Perhaps. I still think that you've got to call shit out, just as you have to call shit out when your own country does it, which, you know, there will be a lot of comments about that as well. Yeah, you yeah. know, like, well, what about sandpaper or whatever the fuck? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. know from our perspective, I feel like we call shit like that out. And that's before we even get to England. The worst <laughs> coats yeah. of all of it. Like, yeah. you know, uh, and, and the thing is, right, when you start to, um, this is why I talk about the excellence of the cricket, because when you start to focus on, uh, the um, unfairness of them ordering in their pitches, mm -hmm. which I think has been relatively proven, yeah. right? Um, then you are taking away from the excellence of the cricket that's happening on the field. You know, like helping the – like, you know, doctoring the pitch doesn't make you hit eight sixes in an innings. Right. You know what I mean? You yeah. have to be really good to do that. Yeah. But you have to try and strike some kind of balance in going, this team is fucking unbelievable and you've got to pay respect to it. And if they win the World Cup, which they will mm. and should – then history will be written by the winner. But by the same token, you should also be able to say ordering in decks yep. when it's an international tournament is a bit how you're going. Yeah. You know? It's uh it's fucking bullshit. But like um the it's hard to separate for me just my cultural observations, like the the pain that was caused fundamentally through colonialism and then, you know, subsequent um now we talking <laughs> subsequent issues <laughs> from that. 
is so profound and so deeply felt. And then over the last few years, basically since the, the inception of the IPL, the cricket has gone shifted its power towards India now. And they are they are the uh, they are the not the owners of the game. They are, they are the ones in, in control of the game, right? They they are pushing the direction of the game in whatever direction they want. And I think the pain that has led for like not just in mm. cricket sense, but geopolitically, the pain that is felt in the nation, and now it's their time. This is yeah. their World Cup. They've got the best players. Maybe that's fair. They've got the record breakers. They've got the they've got the celebrities coming to them. Everyone is bowing down to them. And if I'm an Indian fan, I'm like, I don't give a fuck about what you think happened or what mm. you what you're feeling. This is our time. Mm. You guys fucked us for years. Mm. The last person I'm going to listen to, right, policing the game morally and what should happen with pitches, is yeah. an English cunt. Right, you know, exactly, or another white guy. I yeah. mean, I will, I will honestly, I will never forget sitting in person with Harsha Bogle explaining to us that the English robbed his generation and those before them of their confidence, yeah, and that yeah, young yeah, yeah. people are standing up to that now. So you can only imagine against that backdrop the kind of power mm. and fire and fervor that is being felt in the country. We're sitting here in Australia saying, "I'll, I'll decide whether I'm watching the highlights or a cooking show." <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> Why? Why wouldn't you feel like this yeah. is our time? Yeah. Uh, yep. And why I can I have some kind of sympathy for people who are like, oh, doctoring a pitch is small fry compared to everything else that's been going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is our time, but it also means that if Australia wins the toss or South Africa wins a toss in the final, that's also funny. Yeah. That's also funny. That has to be conceded. Uh, just don't think it's going to happen. So there is one. Semi-final left. The winner of this game is going to get food poisoning in two days' time. <laughs> <laughs> India, who wants, you, you're who gonna wants do to get it. food poisoning? You're going to do it. There, we'll, we'll be doing the review for the game tomorrow morning in that semi-final in Kolkata. I think the weather's actually not too bad. I saw the okay. forecast this morning. It's 50% Website chance stuff? of rain. Website stuff, you know. I, and I sort of looked up in the clouds here in Melbourne. I thought, yeah, yeah. I, I've, got a few, uh, I've got a few ideas about what it's going to be doing yeah. in the West Bengal elections, mostly. It's a niche reference. Um Thanks, as always, for supporting TGC. Click subscribe if you've enjoyed this episode. Click click the like button. Hit the like button, indeed. And don't just click it. Fucking hit, hit it, it if yeah. you enjoyed Farrakh Kohli's record-breaking innings. What a performance this was from actually all involved. It was, it was actually a great game of cricket, I suppose, in, in the context of close it games. It was something. Yeah. yeah, some guys did some stuff. And tonight, some other guys are going to do some stuff in different coloured jerseys. Who's going to play and lose Who's to gonna, India in right. the final? Who's going to win silver? <laughs> See you guys tomorrow. Cheers.